Hello and welcome. Today's video, I wanna talk about a new horse that I have here for training. This is Rebel. Rebel is a teenage Tennessee walker and I've had him for three days now. So today, what I'm working on, all I've done with, is groundwork with him so far. And a lot of people would say, well, you know, he's in his teens, why haven't you ridden him yet? And it's like, well, um, I like to, I don't care what age a horse is, I go through all of the steps that I think are necessary with them. So this guy, he's such a good boy, such a good boy, but he's in a hurry. And so we need to slow down on some things. So as you can see, I've got him saddled up and I just did some round pen work with him tonight. Um, that kind of stuff is not okay. Don't let your horses do that. <laughs> but don't make a big deal about it, but just you know, block it if it happens. So um, that time I was prepared for it. So with this guy, the problems I've been having is just general leading him back and forth. He is in a big hurry. He wants to race me everywhere we go. And he's very impatient when he's just standing tied. That's gotten a lot better. But I just wanna talk about kind of how we got to where we're at right now because I feel like we made a really big breakthrough tonight. And you might think it's silly because all I've been doing is leading this teenage horse around. And, but we've made huge, huge progress, I feel. So I have an exercise that I just call it tracking. And if you wanna learn more in detail about it, I do have a video specifically about it in my members, membership section on my channel. So you can check that out if you're interested. Um, now the noise that's going on in the other room, that is Nash and Manzer. They're both tied in there and just kind of hanging out. <laughs> and so they're making noise and, and just being boys. So. As I'm walking around here, you know, like I said, this guy was in a big hurry. See how he's in front of me again right now? He was in a great big hurry to race me everywhere we went, it felt like. And he's always passing me, kind of bumping into me, really doesn't have the best um, awareness of, you know, where he should be when leading. So the big thing I'm doing is I was just walking around with a flag and just changing my direction often and stopping often and you know speeding up and slowing down and he was just zigzagging all over and in a great big hurry but all of a sudden it was like he was like oh we're not really going anywhere because I just kept walking I just keep moving around and they get to where they don't feel the need to pass you or to get in front of you or anything like that. Now, when I'm leading my horses, I want them to just stay behind me and pay attention to where I'm at. I don't want them bumping into me. I don't want them passing me. Nothing, you know, nothing like that. They need to just come with me. So as you can see, this guy now is behind me where always before he wanted to be in front. So, and I'm pretty confident that he's gonna stop with me now and be more aware of me just because of the simple exercise that we did tonight. So what I feel though, where I feel a lot of people go wrong is, you know, I only worked on this for maybe 15 minutes and I, I didn't work on the same exact exercise the entire time, you know, because like I said, we were stopping, we were walking faster, whatever, but just walking him around, just leading him around going over here, going over there. And I think a lot of people get frustrated too soon with the horse. They get frustrated so soon that they quit. And they're like, well, this isn't gonna get better, so whatever. And they just tolerate a horse racing them, pushing on them, whatever, for years because they think that that's just how the horse is. And as you can see, this horse is just walking with me so nicely on a super long, on a super long lead and we're just kind of going together at my pace. So what I did to make it so he sort of clicked as to what was happening here is I didn't really um, adjust to him at all. I just kind of kept doing my thing and whenever he would go to pass me, I'm changing direction. And the big thing is I'm always pushing him back behind me. So I had a flag and was directing him anytime he would try to pass me. So I was taking his energy and sending it off to the side and around instead of letting him mow me over. So, and he's yawning. Well, it is almost midnight too, but. <laughs> 
So he's just a really, really relaxed boy right now, and I absolutely love it. So I thought I would talk about that. I, um, I just want to stress that don't quit. And I see it all the time. I see it with every single thing I do in the horse industry. You know, people, they quit. They quit way too soon. And there are times, you know, like um, where you just don't know what else to do. And it's been a long time. And sure, leave it on a good note and carry on. A good example is trailer loading. I just recently had my very first... Um, very first horse that I wasn't able to load yet. So we'll see how that goes. But, you know, there's a time and a place when you need to make a change. And in that situation, we definitely needed to make a change. So we end on a good note. But right now, more of what I'm talking about is like when you want your horse to trot, but you can't get them to speed up. A lot of times people will, you know, squeeze or bump on their horse or cluck to them or whatever. And then they're like, he won't go or she won't go and they just quit. Well, that's what makes the horse learn to not do what you want it to do is lack of follow through. So, but for this horse, as we're walking around here, um, again, now I'm going to get his feet a little bit busy and just back him up out of my space. It's not okay to rub on humans. It's not okay. For one, it hurts. Um, I'll tell you a quick little story. When I was pregnant with my daughter, um, I had a horse here named Doc Aho, and if you follow Danny the Horse Girl's channel, you've seen Doc on there. Um, he used to be mine, and I was pregnant probably seven months, and this horse, he had a terrible habit that he came with um, of rubbing on people, and so as soon as you got off of him, he just immediately want to rub his head on you, and some people think it's really cute. They think, oh, how sweet, you know, he's, you know, he loves me, he's rubbing on me, and it's really, that's not the case at all. Um, that horse is just using you as their personal scratching post and they don't walk up to other horses in the herd and just start rubbing on them. That doesn't go over very well. So it's very disrespectful. But so I'm pregnant and this horse just slams his head into my belly and it hurt so bad and it scared me because that could have really hurt me. And it made me think about how dangerous that was. And even if like that had been a smaller child there, how badly they could have been hurt. So I made it a point from that period on to be very particular about that, not letting my horses rub on me and being very aware. So another situation here where I feel like people quit very easily, and I, I work with a ton of beginners. I have so many beginners in my barn. So we do everything from the start. And um, people picking up horses' hooves, like, it's like if the horse won't just like pick up the hoof perfectly for them, they just quit. And so then the horse just learns to ignore you. So as long as there's a follow through and the horse understands what's expected, gosh, things change so quickly, so, so quickly. Another example is bridling. Bridling is one too where people get frustrated very quickly. And same with um, standing for mounting, you know, getting on a horse, they want to stand at the mounting block. The horse doesn't stand there for them. They are just in a big rush, you know, or the horse tries to walk off when you do go to get on. Those are all things that the human is rushing on. And I think that if we all just think about it and slow down and wait for the horse's, um, for the horse to change a little bit. So pay very close attention to the horse's expression. Watch for things like nice big deep breaths, yawning, um, lots of blinking, lowering of the head, licking and chewing. All those things are really good signs. Now horses can yawn and such when they're stressed as well, but you'll be able to tell the signs if you really pay attention to that. So keep working at whatever it is that you're working on don't give up. Wait until you see a change in the horse's expression. And when you see that positive change, that's when it's time to stop. That's when it's time to reward them. And that's when it's time to go and put them away. Um, a lot of times too, I see people just sort of 
they, they do something well and they're like, oh, that was awesome. It worked out really good. And then they just want to keep going at it. And then they drill it and drill it until the horse is tired of it. So we don't want to do that either. But anyway, I'm having such a great session with this guy. And I thought it was really important stuff that I wanted to share. And I wanted to introduce him to everybody too. So he'll be with me for the next month. I'll try to get some videos of him um, and share with you guys. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.